Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the leaked new Model Y, big software features coming to all Teslas, Tesla already studying old Cybertrucks and more, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla recently released their latest software update, version 2024.26, and it brings a lot of improvements and additions to the entertainment system. That includes a few more music options and parental controls, among other things. Tesla's infotainment system already includes Spotify, Apple Music, TuneIn, and Tidal, and now YouTube Music and Amazon Music will be added to these options. Like the other music services, they will also require premium connectivity or an active Wi-Fi connection in order to access your account. That premium connectivity is a $10 a month subscription through Tesla. For YouTube Music, the release notes say, listen to over 100 million songs with YouTube Music Premium. Access your library to see all of your linked and added songs, playlists you created, and artists and podcasts you subscribe to. Then Amazon Music adds Shuffle Mode, all access playlists, plus the largest catalog of top ad-free podcasts. Tesla has also added some practical features. Their parental controls now have more capabilities that parents can use to help keep their young drivers safe. In vehicle, this can be found under Controls, Safety, Parental Controls. Once you enable parental controls with a pin, either through the Tesla mobile app or in vehicle, you can set the vehicle's maximum speed and limit acceleration to chill mode. You can also turn on safety features like speed limit warning, automatic emergency braking, and forward collision warning. On top of that, you can set a night curfew that will send you notifications through the app when the vehicle is driven past curfew. Then, of course, drivers won't be able to disable the controls or change the settings without re-entering the pin. Another feature in this update is navigating to sub-destinations, like a specific terminal at an airport. Now when you enter a destination into the navigation system, some locations will have a sub-destination list that you can choose from for more accurate routing. They have also added weather and air quality information to the status bar on the center display. Your vehicle will now show local weather conditions alongside the temperature. When there is poor air quality outside, it'll show an AQI symbol and index value. You can then tap on the temperature on screen to see details about the local weather forecast, including the highs and lows of the day and the chance of rain. That will also, of course, require premium connectivity. Lastly, you can now schedule charging and preconditioning. From the menu or the Tesla mobile app, you can select a location, schedule a one-off, repeat specific times or days of the week, and also control when charging starts and stops. That can be found under Controls, Schedule. Basically, it's just vastly improving all of the scheduling options you have for charging, which is great to see. This update is currently being rolled out, so it may take a few weeks for you to personally get it, but all these features will be available in all Tesla soon. It's one of those updates that shows just how great it is to have a software updatable car. On the topic of software, Tesla has announced their FSD transfer offer will be extended another month. Usually when you buy Tesla's full self-driving software, it stays with the vehicle. For some, that could be a deterrent to buying a new Tesla because if you wanted FSD in your new car, you would have to buy it again, and that's currently an $8,000 purchase. Since June 24th, however, Tesla has been running a promotion to allow FSD owners to transfer that software to a new vehicle. That offer was initially going to apply to anyone taking delivery of a vehicle before August 31st. Now they have extended that deadline to September 30th. The qualifications are that the order must be placed between June 24th, 2024 to September 30th, 2024, and your delivery must be on or before September 30th. It applies to all of Tesla's vehicles except the Cybertruck, since they are currently only selling Foundation Series Cybertrucks that already come with FSD by default. You don't have to trade in your vehicle in order to transfer, but you would lose it on the vehicle that it's transferring from. It is also stackable with all of the other incentives that may be available, like inventory price cuts and tax credits. More on some of those offerings a bit later in this video. Next up today, arguably the most anticipated vehicle from Tesla right now is the refreshed Model Y. While many are very excited for whatever entirely new vehicle Tesla has to offer in the future, the Model Y is the best selling car in the world of any type. It still remains extremely popular, even though Tesla has not refreshed that car really in any major way since 2020. It's pretty obvious that this car is on its way, as we have now fully seen the refresh of the Model 3 in all markets. That car brings a ton of improvements, and while it may look very similar on the exterior, the improvements are definitely felt from a user perspective. We expect that all of those improvements and more are going to come to this new Model Y, even though it is going to essentially maintain its same shape and functionality. Most likely, it will keep the exact same battery pack and more. For that Model 3 refresh, the code name inside of Tesla was Highland. That has now become what most people refer to this car as, the Model 3 Highland, but for Tesla, it's just the re-engineered Model 3. According to rumors, the code for this new Model Y is Juniper, and Tesla themselves, along with Elon Musk, have communicated multiple times that this refresh is not coming in 2024. 
A lot of people have been expecting this soon, and there have been many rumors about it. So they have tried to get out in front of that and ensure customers that they can still buy a Model Y now and not see it outdated tomorrow. On June 8th, Elon Musk posted on X saying, no Model Y refresh is coming out this year. I should note that Tesla continuously improves its cars, so even a car that is six months newer will be a little better. Here, Elon is quite clear that there is not a major refresh of this car coming, but we never can quite take his word for it. Back in 2019, Elon said there is no refreshed Model X or Model S coming. And then about a year and a half later, they fully refreshed that car. That's when they moved to the horizontal display, completely revamped the interior, and introduced the Plaid Model S. Here as well, Elon specified that there will be minor ongoing changes, and he seems to be saying the same for the Model Y. However, for the Model Y, he is specific that it is not coming out this year. He does not rule out that it is ever coming, so that has led many to assume that January 1st, we might see the new refreshed Model Y. Just yesterday, however, a covered up Model Y was spotted outside the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. This Model Y is covered up in the exact same way that Tesla covered up the Model 3 refresh when they were out testing that before launch. It has no need to hide the wheels or to hide the doors and windows because the only thing changing on the exterior will be the front and rear. There are some great renders of what this car could look like, and it's pretty easy to get this almost 100% accurate. The Model Y is entirely based off of the Model 3, so we can assume with pretty high confidence that these renders, taking the updated elements of the Model 3 and putting them onto a Model Y, are basically completely accurate. Most likely that is exactly what we would see under the covers here. An updated front bumper with improved aerodynamics, new headlights, and the elimination of fog lights. This car has the standard Gemini wheels, so we can assume that the bumper is likely the same as the base and long range trims of the Model 3, but just shaped for the Model Y. If Tesla copies the Model 3 exactly, then there would be a different front bumper for the performance version of the Model Y. Around back, it should largely stay the same, except have the Tesla name written out along the back instead of the T logo. The taillights will be updated, and they will be attached to the trunk, moving along with it when you open and close the trunk. From the outside, those will be the main changes. Technically, they might update the wheels to a new design and slightly change the side mirrors, but the real changes will come inside. Many of those are pretty obvious at this point. The interior will get an entirely new look taken from the Model 3. One of the most exciting features will be the addition of ventilated seats. These will literally be the exact same seats currently shipping on the Model 3. The center screen will be updated with a slightly smaller bezel, and then the slightly controversial change will be the removal of stocks. Shifting will be taken from the right stock and put on screen. Autopilot controls will be shifted to the right scroll wheel on the steering wheel, and then blinker controls will be shifted to the buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. On top of that, you'll have windshield wiper controls and headlight controls moved to buttons on the steering wheel. These things are already dialed in on screen quite a bit in the current Model Y, but will be further moved away from a stock. For some, this cleans up the design of the interior and is a great look. I have been driving the Model 3 refresh since February, and I'm completely used to these controls. I actually like them quite a bit overall. However, for some customers, this will be quite disappointing to see. Tesla already removes a lot of controls and moves a lot of things to the screen, so doing things like shifting on screen will just be another frustration for some. That points to the idea that if you're dead set on getting stocks in your Model Y, now might be the time to buy. According to Tesla's timelines, we won't be seeing this car for at least another five to six months, but it's entirely possible that things have shifted around. Maybe this car does come out earlier. Only time will tell. We know that Tesla will move forward with whatever is most important for demand of their cars. A refreshed Model Y would certainly help with demand since it's pretty guaranteed that there are a number of customers waiting for this car to be refreshed. On top of the refreshed interior though, will come arguably the most important updates to the Model Y. Those include improved ride quality and much better cabin isolation. The new Model 3 is an incredibly quiet, smooth ride. In comparison, right now the Model Y is louder and does not ride as smooth. To me, those will be the most noticeable changes to this Model Y refresh. It will feel that much more premium for the price that Tesla is charging for it. Lastly, we may see a slight range boost thanks to improved aerodynamics. That's always nice to have and leads to better efficiency, but it's a small enough change that it likely won't be extremely noticeable to customers outside of a range prediction number from the EPA. Seeing a leaked photo like this for the new Model Y may not seem that exciting, but it really is. Tesla doesn't go out testing a car until it's absolutely in the release pipeline. It's still maybe months away, but this shows that the Model Y Juniper is indeed coming. It's just a matter of time. Back in April of 2023, we got a leaked photo of the Model 3 with its new headlights. Then Tesla released that car out of their Shanghai factory first and didn't bring it to the US until January of 2024. 
This time, since we're seeing it testing in an area like Pasadena, and since Tesla doesn't want to harm sales of their current most popular car, we are expecting them to release this one a bit differently. Likely there won't be a months long delay between each factory upgrading. Still, a lot of this is based on rumor and speculation, so only time will tell. But what we know for now is that this car is on its way and that Tesla is out testing it in the wild. Next up today, some interesting news for the Cybertruck. First off, the Cybertruck has officially become the best-selling electric pickup truck in the United States. For people who follow Tesla, this isn't much of a surprise, but this will come as a big surprise to a large portion of the population. They've already outpaced Ford with the F-150 Lightning and Rivian with the R1T. For a lot of people, they still think that this car is something Tesla is having trouble selling or only having issues with. They are having some issues with the Cybertruck, more so than I wish they were, but it's still selling very well. More interesting news this week, though, comes with how Tesla is working on fixing Cybertruck issues. Kyle Connor from Out of Spec posted about how Tesla Service wants to swap his Cybertruck drive unit. They said that they are conducting a study on the drive units of early Cybertrucks and chose his truck to participate. They are going to replace his with the updated version. Apparently, multiple owners are getting messages like this, and it applies to both dual-motor and tri-motor early Cybertrucks. Some have noticed a slight vibration in the drivetrain, so people are speculating that this could be the issue. Tesla has gone through a couple recalls of the Cybertruck, so hopefully this doesn't end up leading to another one, but if there is an issue that they are finding, a recall will be necessary. The rollout of the Cybertruck has been very exciting, but definitely not smooth sailing at Tesla. At the same time, it isn't stopping people from buying it, and I know for me, I'm seeing them out on the road more and more each day. Next up today, Tesla often rolls out special deals and incentives to drive sales of their vehicles when sales are slower. These incentives come and go, but they have recently just launched a brand new incentive and brought about the return of another popular one. To start, Tesla has just launched a new discount for all currently enlisted soldiers and veterans of the US military. For the first time, Tesla has started a new military purchase program, which gives eligible customers a $1,000 discount on any Tesla vehicle, with the exception of the Cybertruck. On their website, they say this offer is available to military veterans, retirees, active duty members, and their spouses. There is no limit to the number of vehicles that can be purchased. Tesla uses a third-party service to verify eligibility, and the discount is applied after verification. It is currently unclear whether this program is permanent, or if it will eventually go away like many of Tesla's other incentives, but hopefully it sticks around. Still, for those that qualify, this is a nice added deal that makes their cars that much more affordable to some. In addition to that, Tesla has also brought back a popular incentive, free supercharging miles. From July 3rd until August 15th, customers who take delivery of a new Tesla vehicle, of course, with the exception of the Cybertruck, will receive three free months of supercharging. This incentive is currently only available in the US and Canada, but it will still likely prove to be extremely popular. That can be a pretty substantial savings, especially if you're planning to drive your car a lot in the first three months of ownership. So interested customers might want to act soon to take advantage of this deal. As far as new options go for Tesla vehicles, they have just made their recent Quicksilver color available on Model 3 trims coming out of their Chinese factory. The Quicksilver color was introduced to the American market only a few months ago for the Model Y, so we might see it arrive similarly on the Model 3 very soon. Additional options arriving for customers is always exciting, as it allows you to customize your Tesla vehicle to be the ideal car for you. It also just helps change things up from the five colors we've seen from Tesla for years now. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Remac is a niche EV maker that has risen in prominence recently with the release of their Nevera supercar and their partnership with Porsche. Their founder, along with several other executives, have just announced a new autonomous vehicle brand called Vern, and they have shown off their plans to build a level 4 autonomous rideshare vehicle by sometime in 2026. Built from the ground up for autonomy, this vehicle will have a luxurious two-seater design with a huge wraparound screen inside. Naturally, this vehicle won't have any pedals or steering wheel, much like what we're expecting from the upcoming Tesla Robotaxi. The company describes how a lot of vehicle settings like comfort lighting, temperature, and even scent can be preset by the customer through the Rideshare app. So even though you won't have to own one of these vehicles personally, it can still be totally customized to meet your needs and desires. Ultimately, what we've seen so far is just a great concept drawing for a car that is two years away from release at minimum. It's great to see other companies announcing plans to compete with the Tesla Robotaxi, but we'll have to see how well this vehicle will shape up. This company has a lot to prove regarding the base functionality of their mobile eye drive autonomous platform, and then they have to show that they can actually scale up this vehicle. This company has never had to make a vehicle at scale before, so while they are partnering with other automakers, only time will tell if they can really manage it. Still, it's cool to see more designs for robotaxis be brought forward by other companies as we await word on what Tesla's robotaxi will bring. 
While many EV recalls are increasingly resolved by over-the-air software fixes, the dreaded physical recall is still an issue for every major brand. Porsche has just announced a big physical recall of over 31,000 of their electric vehicles sold over the last several years. Certain Porsche Taycan models from 2020 onward have been recalled over potentially faulty brake hoses. Over time, these hoses can crack and leak brake fluid, potentially compromising its ability to brake effectively. As such, 31,689 Taycan vehicles have just been recalled to receive a new flexible brake hose that should last much longer. This comes off the back of two other recent recalls for this car, one in December that impacted over 41,000 vehicles due to a faulty charging cable, and one in March for a potential battery short circuit. It's always a shame to have to bring your car in over a recall, but it's usually better than whatever the potential downside of not doing so would be. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the next 10 products coming from Tesla, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.